Women for Deakin. Thanks uh, very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, look, it gives me great pleasure to uh, get up today and support the Omnibus Repeal Day. And I, in particular, want to start by congratulating the Prime Minister uh, and his Parliamentary Secretary and Member for Kuyong, Josh Frydenberg, for the outstanding work that they have done in pushing forward our second Red Tape Repeal Day. Um, We've already made significant steps towards repealing red tape for Australian businesses uh, and individuals um, with our first uh, red tape repeal day. We made a commitment prior to the election to hold regular uh, repeal days because we've always believed that getting off the back of businesses, we assist them in getting on with what they do best. And one of the things they do best is creating jobs in this economy. Removing outdated and unnecessary regulation is something that many parties in opposition propose, uh, and they uh, promise to do it should they be elected. However, it's only this government which is actually getting on with the job of actually reducing the regulatory burden now that we are in government. The Labor Party are a classic example of this. Before the election in 2007, under the former Prime Minister Rudd, they committed to a policy of one in, one out when it comes to regulation. The small business minister at the time, the Honourable Craig Emerson, even promised to take a giant pair of scissors to the red tape that is strangling small businesses. However, Mr Deputy Speaker, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. Because we know under the Labor Party in those six years that more than 21,000 new regulations were introduced. So, so much for the one-in-one-out policy, so much for taking a big pair of scissors to red tape. It's almost laughable if it wasn't so serious. So we stand in contrast uh, to the false rhetoric of those opposite. We're not changing department names or making glib statements. We are actually doing what that former minister said. We are taking a giant pair of scissors to the red tape that strangles small business. The reason, of course, is that the coalition um, believes that reducing red tape is going to be one of the most important elements of driving economic growth. And we don't want economic growth for economic growth's sake. But improving the ability for our economy to grow will improve the lives of our citizens. It will create more jobs. It will hopefully mean people can uh, fulfil their own lives in the way they want. Unfortunately, in 2014, Australia ranked 124th out of 148 countries for the burden of government regulation in the World Economic Forum Global Competitive Index. And the Productivity Commission has estimated that regulation and associated compliance costs could amount to as much as 4 per cent of Australia's GDP. So today, for the second time, we seek to repeal that lamentable legacy. This repeal day removes almost 1,000 pieces of regulation and more than 7,200 pages of legislation. This follows up from the work in March, when the government re removed over 10,000 pieces uh, and 50,000 pages of legislation and regulation, which delivered over $700 million worth of compliance cost benefits. Together with today's repeal day, we will have a total net deregulatory saving of over $2.1 billion, an important achievement for job creation in Australia. Already, uh, we've made big steps, as I've said. We now require cabinet, cabinet submissions proposing legislative changes um, go through a regulatory impact process, something that uh, the Labor Party and government abandoned. Establishing designated deregulation units within ministers' departments and, where appropriate, linking the remuneration of senior members of the public service to their performance in reducing red and green tape. But in addition to all of those changes, and that is only a few, we are also seeking to eliminate the extensive duplication and regulatory overlap that exists between different layers of government, 
particularly federal and state regulation. And in my electorate of Deakin, I constantly hear the cry from businesses and individuals that uh, they have to meet, in many cases, competing regulatory requirements at a state and federal level. And it's infuriating, and it strangles uh, innovation, it strangles entrepreneurship, and that's why this is so important. Another key, uh, another key way in which we will be removing red tape is to streamline and improve uh, the regulatory obligations and reporting methods. There will be $88 million a year in, in compliance cost savings, uh, including with respect to the Australian Tax Office, Medicare and Centrelink. And so far, something again that I get, I, I've heard constantly in the last, uh, in the last few weeks is that five million Australians have created their MyGov account, and I've been getting extraordinary feedback from that. So I'm going to end my contribution early to enable uh, other speakers to, um, to speak on this omnibus repeal bill. Uh, and understandably, as a government, we are, uh, we are very keen to all have a say here, because um, this uh, will be the future uh, for driving economic growth in this country, and as I've said, not economic growth for its own sake, but for the sake of the lives of our citizens, improving jobs. And again, now that the parliamentary secretary is in the chamber, uh, I want to congratulate him again for driving this process. Because I have business men and women in Deakin who shake my hand and say, "Please thank the parliamentary secretary for driving these changes." Uh, so I commend the bills. Thank you. I thank the member for...